One thing is certain, everything is better after a good night's sleep. Welcome to another Virtue unboxing video. This time we're going to look at sleeping devices. There is a number of devices on the market that are supposed to help you sleep in different ways. We decided to see what devices are available if you just go to the shop here in Copenhagen, Denmark and ask the shop attendant there what is available to help you sleep. Since these are smart devices, they're there to collect and record data. Since they're, these are sleep devices, they're there to collect and record data that is rather intimate. These things go into your bed. The question then for us is what happens to your data? Wearable technologies have had a rather checkered history with how they treat data. Back in 2011, when Fitbit was just becoming something people actually use, it turned out they posted a lot of the user activity online, and that included things that happen at night in bed. Since then, many companies have produced smart devices and they've gotten better about managing data. So our first device here is the Burr Therapy Sleep Expert. It's a high precision sensor, and instead of wearing it, you put it under the mattress. It's supposed to provide you data so that you understand what's going on with your sleep so perhaps you could change your behavior and sleep a little better. Now since we're interested in data handling, when we arrived in the store and we asked the store attendants about sleep devices, they showed us the Bureau Sleep Expert. When we asked them about data, they didn't really have a whole lot of good answers. If you look online on the online store, there's quite a lot of information about the sleep expert, but again, very little about about the data or privacy policy of what happens. Clearly, these days, before buying a device, you do research. And part of that research perhaps ought to be taking a look at the privacy policy of the device. But nobody reads those, really. Given the fact that nobody reads them, we decided to go read them ourselves. So here we open. In the box, we find, oh, very pretty, the specs on the back. It's very light. On the box, it tells you just that we help you understand your own unique sleeping pattern. That's nice. Under the plastic, it tells you what data it records, but not what happens to it. Let's take a look at the description of apps. Since these devices are smart, device by itself doesn't seem to work. You need to have an app on your phone. Here's the Bureau Sleep Expert app, and it says here that the Sleep Expert is produced in cooperation with Early Sense Proactive Patient Care. I wonder what that is. More documentation here. Assuming that you have quite a lot of time, you could go through a lot of these advertisements for other products. Here's a quick start guide. Tells you to activate Bluetooth, connect the smartphone to the internet, download the free Sleep Expert app from the App Store, start the app, register, and apparently off you go. And apparently there's a list of supported smartphones and tablets. So it turns out my phone may not actually be supported, but the only way I can find out is if I look at this QR code. So let's see what happens. System requirements. Wow, type of software. Oh boy. <laughs> this is very, very intense. Sleep sensors, SL70, there we go. App, sleep client, operating system, Android. This phone appears to not be on this list. So when you're buying this, you don't know if it'll actually work, especially this is especially important for this one. You don't know if it's work unless you check first. Well, it turns out that if you read all of the documentation in this box, none of it will actually tell you what happens to your data. Turns out that Sleep Expert is connected to the Sleep Expert app. The app isn't owned by Bureau that makes a sense of it. It's owned by an Israeli medical device company called Early Sense. The terms of service are fascinating. The terms of service for this company state that if I do not understand or agree with these terms of service, I should immediately exit the services and avoid making any further use of them. It's not clear why though. What is it that I'm supposed to understand? The service repeats that the use of the service is at the user's sole risk. So it's my responsibility to find out whether I actually want to use this or not. And it's still not quite clear about what is it that I'm supposed to worry about. They do say you are responsible for taking all precautions you believe are necessary or advisable to protect yourself against any claim, damage, loss, or hazard that may arise by virtue of your use of reliance upon the services and or any of the early sense IPR. I admit that I had to read this a couple of times and I still don't quite understand what they mean. Is this about the device or the app? 
Clearly this is about the app because they don't produce the device, but what kind of damage, loss, or hazard? Additionally, it says that these terms of service are governed by and construed in accordance with the laws of Israel and the application of the United Nations Conventions of Contract for the international sale of goods or other international laws is expressly excluded. Although this is being sold in Denmark, but the app is free. So the terms state that it is the user's sole responsibility. We generally request consent from the data subject. That the user consented, so it must be okay. I'm not quite sure what I'm consenting to and how. But since I cannot use this device without the app, and there's nothing in the box or in the process of actually buying this device that tells me anything about the app and the fact that I need it as well, and that I should be concerned, apparently, with taking on all of this responsibility, we did a lot of research. It was very difficult to figure out what data is collected, for what purpose, and why. But I have another device here to look at that perhaps is a little bit less threatening. This thing you cannot use without having the app and having it all connected to the internet. This makes sense. It's a sensor. And this thing is all about just collecting data and telling you about it. Without the app, it's just an inert piece of plastic that you would put under your bed. So in case you really want the data, you should be aware that the data is collected by a company that doesn't seem to be very forthcoming about what it is that they do with the data, but they do want you to take responsibility for using them. But let's look at the device that hopefully does not actually need us to connect it to the internet. Now, snoring is notorious. There's a ton of different devices out there to help people stop snoring because their partners get upset because they get woken up and it's hard to sleep and there's now smart devices for snoring. Let's see about this one. This is the Burra Snore Therapy SL7. When talking to the shop proprietors and looking online, we could not find any discussion about what happens to the data, what sort of data it collects, and how to use it. When I open the box, I see there's, again, a lot of documentation. The device can explode if you throw it into fire, so don't throw it into fire. It turns out that if you take this device out of the box, charge it and turn it on without connecting to the internet, it can still work. The trick is you can't actually adjust any of the baseline settings, any of the defaults, unless you connect this thing to a smartphone. In the event that the default settings of this device work for you, from a data point of view, this is completely safe. It's just a device, just like the thing you put in your nose, but perhaps a little bit more expensive. If, however, you want to adjust it and want to know about your snoring over time, you have to connect it via Bluetooth to an app on your phone. Let's see what's under the box. Advertising of the other viewer sleep products. Oh, look, the sleep expert is already here. Some of the reviews claim that the snore stopper simply wakes you up once you start snoring. I guess their promotional video didn't lie. A man is using the snow stopper and his happy partner is a woman who can finally sleep. Now, Burr has a number of apps. There's about 15 in total, each for many, many, many of their devices. So I downloaded the app and a notification popped up. Allow Sleep Quiet to access photos, media, and files on my device. The only way I can actually use the device is if I say yes. That seems coercive. The latest GDPR does not allow this sort of forced coercive consent. When you buy it, nothing on the box tells you that not all devices are compatible, except there's a tiny QR code that says list of supported devices. Turns out that the app and the device work with some smartphones and not others. It wasn't anything that the shop proprietors told us about. Where is measured data saved? The answer is that the data is saved on the snore stopper itself and on the smartphone once it's transferred. This doesn't actually tell us whether the company also saves the data. So here we are, we've unboxed two devices, and these devices come into our spaces and they collect data. Sleep Expert is there to collect data. It turns out it uses an app that's developed by a different company, and the company is telling you that you consent to whatever it is they want to do with your data without telling you what it is they're actually going to do with it. The Snore Stopper is a little bit more friendly, presumably if you connect it to a smartphone and adjust the default settings and get it to work for you. If you don't connect it afterwards, no data is exchanged. But again, what we see here is a little bit of a disconnect. The company clearly is trying to be very open about what they're doing with the data, but they don't quite go the extra mile. What they don't do is they don't tell us, do they get the data? And if they do, what do they do with it? And if they don't, what I would like to see is a statement that they actually don't. It doesn't mean you shouldn't use these devices, but you should know what you're getting into.